All right, welcome to the amazing Tasmanian capital, Hobart. Always super popular as a travel destination. I'm so glad that we're finally here making this video. Now, if you're planning your own trip to Hobart, we have 10 amazing things for you to do and stay with us for an exciting giveaway. It's all coming up. Let's get into it. Sitting pretty in Tasmania's southeast, Hobart is the second oldest capital city in Australia and is packed with heritage highlights, including the working waterfront. The city has undergone a cultural renaissance in recent decades, thanks largely to the Museum of Old and New Art. Mona is one of Hobart's top attractions, as is the weekly Salamanca Market, which takes place on Saturdays in Salamanca Place. In this video, we'll ride high on a hop-on hop-off bus tour with Red Decker and pound the pavement on a heritage walking tour in Battery Point. Visit Australia's oldest continuously operating brewery. Get arty at the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. Have a close encounter of the convict kind on a ghost tour at the Hobart Penitentiary. Sample some of the best single malt whiskies this side of Scotland. And feed our inner gourmet on a day trip to Bruni Island with Bruni Island Safaris. But before we hit the road, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. Thanks to our good friends at TFE Hotels, we're staying at the fabulous Vibe Hotel Hobart, which has a great CBD location, striking facade and a stylish contemporary feel. The hotel offers 142 guest rooms and suites with views to the harbour, city and Mount Wellington and all the amenities you would expect from a hotel of this standard. From paddock to seashore, the on-site eatery Belvedere showcases the Apple Isle's rich bounty of produce. And you can burn off any indulgences in the hotel's pool and fitness centre. Now, there's no better way to get acquainted with a new city than on a hop-on, hop-off bus tour. Hobart's Red Decker has an open upper deck, stops at most of the city's key attractions and provides commentary throughout the 90-minute loop. My first stop for the day is the historic inner city suburb of Battery Point, home to an array of period architecture and charming Arthur Circus the only residential circus in Oz. The Battery Point Community Association has put together a self-guided walking tour of the precinct and President Charles Morgan tells me more. So Battery Point was one of the first areas developed uh, in Van Diemen's land. It has a very strong history uh, with the waterfront, with factories that were established in Salamanca Place and a very strong history with boat building. There are some big mansions in Battery Point, but there are also lots of cottages uh, where the workers who worked in Salamanca Place uh, resided. I just love the diversity of Battery Point. I, mean, I love the old buildings. I love the variety of streetscapes. It's always been a very dynamic community with people helping each other out and continues to be so. Now, the committee's put together a walking tour. Just, just tell us a bit about the walk. Okay, the walk is called In Bobby's Footsteps, and it's a history walk around land that was granted to Reverend Robert Knopwood uh, in, I think it was 1804. He came to Australia, um, and as I say, was granted this land. He ran into trouble with money, so the land was uh, basically sold off. And so it takes you through um, various streets of Battery Point. Uh, you stop at different houses, um, different streets. We have a little booklet called In Bobby's Footsteps. So that can be uh, purchased at the visitor center or it can be purchased from shops in Battery Point. 
back on the bus, I enjoy the aircon on offer on the lower deck en route to my next stop. And those beer kegs are a dead giveaway. Now, no list of things to do in Hobart would be complete without including the amazing Cascade Brewery. Sitting in the shadow of Mount Wellington, the building dates back to 1824. If you've got eagle eyes, you might be able to pick that out. And of course, it's Australia's oldest continuously operating brew house. Now, the good news for beer lovers is that you can come here to Cascade and try a range of products that are exclusive to Tasmania. Cascade generally offers a popular 60-minute guided brewery tour, which sadly wasn't running during our visit. Instead, I head for the New Look Brewery Bar, which occupies the original Cascade homestead. Order a tasting paddle and find a shady spot in the garden. I can also vouch for the dining menu, which showcases Tasmanian produce. From Cascade, the bus returns to the city centre before heading out to the stunning Royal Tasmanian Botanical Gardens. This 14 hectare horticultural wonderland is free to enter and packed with photogenic highlights, including the delightful lily pond and fernery. The Regal Anniversary Arch originally stood in the city and was relocated here in 1968 to mark the garden's 150th anniversary. Towering 1,300 metres above the city, majestic Mount Wellington often has its head in the clouds. But on a good day, the views from the summit are breathtaking. Despite the ominous cloud cover, we board the Explorer Shuttle and hope for the best. All right, well, we moved mountains to try and bring you a good view of Hobart from the top of Mount Wellington, Kunanyi. Unfortunately, the mountain had other ideas. Uh, it is zero visibility up here at the moment, just really low cloud cover. Pretty spectacular, though. The good news is our guide tells me he can get us a view on the way down. And a short walk from the bus stop at the Springs reveals this spectacular vista. There are plenty of opportunities for visiting culture vultures to get their art fix here in the Tasmanian capital. Of course, you've got Mona down on the Derwent River, there's the Salamanca Art Centre, and I'm visiting the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. It's a bit like Mona in some ways, it's a mix of the old and the new, but in this case, under one very historic roof. So there's actually three sides to TMAG. There's the museum and the art gallery, but we also have a research arm as well. So we have another whole part of TMAG that is conducting world-class research into all sorts of things, from zoology to a herbarium. We have um, people working there in botany. Uh, so yes, the Tasmanian Museum stands on a site that includes some of the oldest buildings in Hobart. Um, this building behind me is the Bond Store. We have the Commissariat. Uh, the Private Secretary's Cottage is also one of the oldest buildings in Tasmania, certainly one of the oldest public buildings. And Customs House, which is our sort of back of house area and our offices, is um, also substantial in age, uh, most dating from uh, the 1800s. Um, we have a team of people whose who job is essentially to take care of the buildings and make sure that they're you know, functional, operational, but also suitable for exhibitions and public programs, all the things we do here at TMAC. And of course you have the uh, permanent thylacine exhibition. We do, Don't absolutely. Tell me a bit about that. So our thylacine exhibition is very popular. It displays some specimens from the early 1900s. Our thylacine collection has also been very important in terms of the research that's going on at the moment into the thylacine and we've worked really closely, or our, our scientists and conservators have worked really closely with Melbourne University 
and um, been a part of that really important research. Melissa's referring to research aimed at bringing the Tassie tiger back from extinction using its genome. Here's hoping. The Art Gallery's collection encompasses a wide range of works, including some very significant colonial pieces. The Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery do is about Tasmanian and Tasmanian identity and what it is to be Tasmanian. So we've got artworks by many really well-known Tasmanian artists, including Glover. His works are iconic pieces that many, many people come here to see. One of Glover's most famous works is My Harvest Home. That's on display in our colonial galleries. The works that we have, say, from Glover or from Nutball, or those calibre of artists really relate to our heritage and our history. We do have a proportion of contemporary art on display all the time. We also work with Dark Mofo, and that's another really great way that we partner on contemporary art projects. Across town, another architectural link with the past has a dark heritage. The Hobart Convict Penitentiary was established in the 1830s and would go on to house the old Hobart Jail and Supreme Court. Beneath the surviving courtroom, tunnels and solitary confinement cells date back to the convict era. The complex has a small museum and hosts evening ghost tours. I'm Stacey and I operate the ghost tours in here. The ghost tours are run Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights. There is two tours, six and eight o'clock, and you can come in and do the tour, learn some history and turn the lights out and see what happens. We head down into the tunnels, which certainly are on the spooky side. And Stacey tells me about some of the penitentiary's reported ghostly inhabitants. Uh, we have a resident who likes to hide out in the tunnels in here, Shadow Man. He likes to pop out and make himself known. The tunnels is where you would be held waiting for your court cases to come up. I've seen a gentleman in a guard's uniform. A lot of people report seeing shadow people in here or white mist floating around. Depending if you're downstairs or upstairs, it might be a prisoner, someone that worked in here at one stage. It really does depend on the spot you're in. Later, we get a taste of life on the inside. What's your favourite part of the penitentiary? The gallows. The gallows. You get to see the gallows? You do, you get to go under the gallows. You're going to see where it all starts and where it all ends. And while we won't give too much away, these working gallows are spine-chilling, even for a sceptic like me. I would say come in and do the tour. If you still leave a sceptic, that's fine, but more than likely you'll have some sort of experience in it. Beer lovers don't have it all their own way in Hobart. Whiskey fans are also well catered for, as a visit to the newly opened still reveals. Tasmanian uh, whiskey is considered some of the best in the world. Uh, we like to think that it's just different and it's very unique. We use Tasmanian barley, which gives a beautiful oily richness to the whiskey, uh, and you tend to find that across all Tasmanian single malts. The industry started 30 years ago when Bill Luck first started making whiskey, and out of that, an entire industry has grown. Uh, certainly, Lark Distillery is considered one of the world's most innovative distilleries. Uh, we've been nominated as the top four distilleries in the world for the last two years. But you'll find the entire industry is just doing really interesting things, and the world has really stood up and taken notice. I actually heard on the grapevine, I don't know if you can talk about this, but I heard you've got a very famous customer called Barack Obama, is that right? Um, you would be surprised how many people know and love Lark Whiskey. So where we are today is the still, which is a celebration of all things Tasmanian whiskey. So what we do here is we celebrate every single distillery that is making whiskey across this state. So people can come here and they can explore whiskey in all its forms. We can do a fantastic guided tasting for them uh, where they get to taste directly from these barrels right here. We always like to tailor the experience directly to the guests. But if I was not able to ask the questions, I would always start with luck. 
Dark Classic Cask. It is the style of whiskey that we've been making ever since we really burst onto the stage with the best whiskey outside Scotland. Uh, and it's what put Tasmania and Australia on the map for whiskey making. And then I'd probably do something really interesting, maybe our Kinotto cask. And with that, we actually season a whiskey barrel with Italian Kinotto. It's Tasmanian Kinotto, but the Italian Cola. Uh, and then we put the whiskey in there to finish. And the whiskey picks up a lot of those Italian Kinotto flavors. So it's really unlike anything you would have tasted before. There are plenty of great day trip destinations within easy reach of Hobart, but on this trip we're ticking off one of the most popular options. Now, Bruni Island is just a 30 kilometre drive southeast of the city, but it's a world away in terms of the sublime natural beauty, the gourmet food scene, uh, a rich history to explore, which is reflected at the Bruni Island Lighthouse. We're going to cover all those for you with Bruni Island Safaris. It's a bit of a wild and woolly day, but we're going to make the best of it. This is Bruni Island. Bruni Island Safaris offers CBD hotel pickup, and before long, we're on board the Sea Link Ferry from Kettering. The trip across the tongue-twisting Dontracasto Channel takes just 10 to 15 minutes, and our excellent guide Rick soon has us back on the bus and ready for a day of discovery. Rick's a Bruni local, and he makes two quick stops to pick up supplies for our first tasting experience. Fresh oysters from Get Shucked, and cheese and sourdough from the Bruni Island Cheese Company. After a quick demonstration from Rick on the art of our fresco oyster consumption, it's 2468, dig in, don't wait. The tour makes several stops across the day, but one of the most memorable is the Bruni Island Lighthouse in South Bruni. It's a short walk up to the lighthouse from the car park, and we get a guided tour of the lighthouse itself. The views from the external balcony are superb, and of course, what goes up must come down. Our included lunch is served at the popular Hotel Bruni, which overlooks Sunset Bay. We get to choose our meal from a range of main courses, and I opt to warm the cockles with a bowl of seafood chowder. There's no doubt Bruni is a gourmet's paradise. Rick makes another two stops for tastings. One at the Bruni Island Chocolate Company, which has a gorgeous bushland setting. And one at Bruni Island Honey, where we get to see the bees being busy. And after all that indulgence, we burn off some calories with a walk up to Truganini Lookout, overlooking the Neck, a narrow isthmus connecting North and South Bruni. All in all, this top day out from Hobart has something to interest everyone. Now, who wouldn't want to call in and have a drink at Australia's oldest continuously operating pub? Well, that's what you can do in Hobart at the Hope and Anchor. 
Now, I've got to say, it's a bit of a contentious claim, but this particular pub even has its own museum. It's got to be old. It feels fitting to wind up this trip at one of Hobart's many classic 19th century pubs. Grab that drink and head up to the Hope and Anchors second floor to peruse the two centuries of memorabilia on display. If these walls could talk, they'd have plenty of tales to tell. The downstairs bistro is warm and cosy and offers a menu of hearty pub classics. For more ideas for amazing things to do in Hobart, just head to our website.